I'm calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, December 20th, 2021. This is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Town Council Doug Heim is with us tonight. He's not on the Zoom right now. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with an act signed into law on June 16th, 2021, that extends certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The act includes an extension until April 1, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. This is the last scheduled meeting of the Select Board for calendar year 2021. So let's see how much of the town's business we can get done to close out the year. Uh, I will now turn to the first item on the agenda, which is an executive session uh, to conduct a strategy session in preparation for contract negotiations with non-union personnel, the town manager, and or conduct contract negotiations with same. Just for the public's benefit, we will, once we take a motion, we will be going into ex executive session and we will then um, have the executive session. We will come back to the public session and um, have our regular meeting. I, I am anticipating that will take place at 7.15. Um, so if I could ask for a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, and uh, I'll, I'll run the roll. Uh, so motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. And I am a yes. Okay. So we will be leaving this platform and we will be coming back in uh, 25 minutes or so. We'll leave everybody is back to the meeting. So I uh, welcome back to the select board meeting for December 20th, 2021. Um, I am going to take item three out of order. I will take that next on our agenda, which is a vote to ratify the town manager contract and uh, says in the agenda, if appropriate, it is appropriate. Um, so I, I um, just wanna let the public know, we met in executive session. The board took a vote, which I am gonna ask that we repeat the vote in public session and took a vote to approve the town manager's contract for fiscal 22, beginning on February 11th, 2022 and running until February 10th, 2025. We then invited the town manager into the executive session to complete our negotiation on the contract. So um, I will start with the, the motion and then we may have some comments. I believe Mr. Hurd had made the motion. So I'd ask Mr. Hurd to make the motion again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hopefully I can do it more artfully than in executive session. No, I'll make a motion to approve the town manager's contract as laid out in the parameters that were shared with us by the chair. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And uh, do, I believe Mrs. Mahan had the second? Second. Okay, 
Thank you. Okay. And before we open up for discussion, just um, a, a summary uh, for the public. We have been talking with the town manager for the past few months. And, and as the public knows, we had a um, uh, earlier this year in the evaluation process, the town manager scored very high. We value his services to the town greatly. Um, we wanted him to come back for another three years. It was a matter of agreeing to terms. Um, We've heard from the town manager this summer um, about his commitment to Arlington and through the negotiations that we had that came through loud and clear. So speaking for myself, I'm really happy that um, he has uh, agreed to do that and uh, will we'll be with us uh, again going forward. I do wanna summarize um, a few things that uh, what we will do, if we were in the chambers, we'd actually be signing the contract this evening, but because we're by Zoom, we will be doing that over the next day or two, and then we'll be releasing the final contract. We'll make arrangements for members to sign the contract once we have a affirmative vote and, and the town manager will sign it as well. Just to summarize, um, we had various categories of compensation in the contract between calendar years 2019 and 2022. They included a base salary, a separate housing allowance, longevity, and there were other items within the contract. This new contract, um, we will have one item of base salary. The base salary beginning on February 11, 2022 will be $233,000. There will not be a separate housing allowance and the longevity is now rolled into the base salary. The town manager has been with us for over 10 years uh, under a default provision in the town bylaws. He was entitled to longevity. We have now taken that. Um, it is not a separate item. The town manager agreed to that. It is built in to the base salary. The only other change from the existing contract is that the deferred compensation provision, which was at 5%, is now at 6%. So in, in the short term, there are some changes um, that the town manager has agreed to. And I think long term, there are some real benefits to the town manager uh, in terms of staying um, here in Arlington and, and we're really excited about that. So speaking for myself, um, um, having worked closely with Adam this past year in particular as the chair, um, I see the value that he brings to the community and, and, and the great job that he does and, and also see the great challenges that we have ahead um, fiscally um, with, with the potential for an override in a couple of years and other challenges. And I know he's up to that to that task, and and um, so I I'm thrilled that that he will be joining us. Um, so at, at this point, I, I before we take the final vote, I'll turn it to other board members if they if they would like to offer any comments. Um, and I'll I'll start in order of seniority. I'll start with Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, um, for really guiding us through this process. Um, every time I've gone through this. Um, Mr. Chapter Lane is one, two, three, fourth town manager um, I've had the opportunity to work with. Uh, enjoyed three of the five thoroughly and one with the shortest tenure I didn't. Uh, one of the things I really um, continue to value with the town manager is um, his ha affect how he conducts himself. Um, always prepared, respectful, um, and also willing um, you know, when I come in and I'm just ready to butt heads, um, he's always had a an active and responsive conversation with me and just told me his point of view and I laid out mine. And there were times um, one of us changed our minds, usually not, but but we definitely got clarity and, and I do appreciate that. And um, so I wanna thank the town manager as well as the chair. Thank you, Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, and I want to thank the chair for your work on this process and thank the town manager for engaging in really, I think, healthy and productive conversations throughout the contract process. I, too, am thrilled to have the town manager come back for another three years. I think every time we go to the evalu evaluation process, we talk about how what a great asset the town manager is for the town of Arlington and, as we know, is very sought after by other municipalities. So it's a privilege and an honor that he decided to 
to stay with Arlington and to renew his contract. And we're really happy about that. I mean, the amount of effort and really just reasonableness that you bring to every issue, I think real is a huge asset to this town. We don't agree on everything, but I, just like Mrs. Mahan, I think when uh, every time we've had a conversation that we on an issue that we haven't agreed on, we come out on the back end in agreement. And so I, I really value your ability to you know approach every issue with an open mind and be uh, cognizant of the different opinions that you get from both residents, but certainly from this board. And I know that's not an easy hat to wear sometimes. So I do appreciate your uh, your demeanor in, in that respect. And you can't match Adam's effort level as a town manager. And you know that is certainly something that we value. So I'm very glad to have you coming on for another three-year contract and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chaplain, for accepting the terms. I mean, uh, uh, we certainly, we, uh, we, I don't know to what extent it's appropriate to go into any details, so I'm going to assume not, uh, uh, but but um, as you dig into details, I mean, I think it becomes really apparent, I mean, uh, just I mean, uh, how good a person you are uh, and how much you care about the town. And and um and I appreciate all that you do. I mean, I mean, it's a really hard job. If nothing else, I me mean, just dealing with five of us is hard. And then you get me, eight thirty on a Monday morning. And if you all think I'm intense in these meetings, it's like undiluted Len. Me for thirty minutes on a Monday morning. You know, is is I'm sure it's something else. But uh, uh but 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 I mean, I learn a lot from you. I mean, and 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 uh, it's it's really a pleasure. Um, working with you and look forward to working with you in any capacity I mean over the next three years or whatever amount of time I mean um, it's to our advantage to work together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helma. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapter Lane, for your commitment to this town. Um, it has been clear to me for the many years I've been involved in town government as a resident in this past year as a new member of the board how much you care about the people of this community and how much you care about the people who work for the town. And uh, that comes through loud and clear. That's something I hear consistently uh, from people who, who talk to me. And I, you know, I said, I often say that the town manager, choosing the town manager is the most important decision that this board makes. And I think in a lot of respects, that is true. It's a really hard job. Very few people, very few people can do it well especially as well as you do. I think that we've seen that by the respect of Mr. Chaplin's peers and his electing him to leadership, statewide leadership in this field. Uh, but we see this locally with a town manager who is remarkably accessible, is open and is honest. Um, you know, I think that disagreements are part of the job, part of the nature of government. Um, disagreements with decisions, unhappiness with, with priorities that we all have to make. Uh, but the one thing that Arlington can count on is we have a town manager who will tell us the truth, who will do what he says he'll do, and he'll be honest with us. And I've seen that combined with incredible grace and professionalism, um, particularly under criticism, whether that's fair or unfair. And I think that you represent the town honorably, and we are fortunate as we go into some challenging years uh, to have you at the helm. And uh, we appreciate your sticking with us and uh, look forward to working with you for many more years to come. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. Um, before I go to the body, I, I, I wanna give you an opportunity to speak as well, Mr. Chapter Lane, and, and uh, thank you again. And, and uh, the, the floor is yours and then, and then we'll take the final vote. Great, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I really wanna thank uh, both all of you collectively as a board and each of you individually. Um, I really have appreciated, some of you I've known longer than others, but I've appreciated our work together, especially over these past few difficult years. Um, you know, to pick, on, to pick up on the points of a, that a few of you made, um, you know, you're, you're right that being a town manager really anywhere is a tough job. It's a tough job in good times, never mind in challenging times like we've all been facing. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, doing such a tough job in Arlington is the best you can get. And that's predominantly because Arlington is powered by amazing people. And it doesn't mean that um, any of us always agree on things, you know, whether it be the manager of the board or residents, but ultimately this is a community that is powered by people that care about the community and want to advance things. And if, if you can have that as a starting point, you're in a good position. So I'm very excited um, to uh, be able to sign this contract with the board and continue to serve the town. I'm very thankful for the consideration that you've given me. And I look forward to all the, meeting all the challenges that we have ahead. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Um, so on a, a motion to approve the contract by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, uh, Attorney Hahn. Heard. Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank, thank you very much and congratulations, Mr. Chaplin. And thank you. Uh, be around for another three years and uh, we really look forward to that. So um, with that, we will now go to item two on the agenda, um, which is a request for approval for a vigil to observe January 6th anniversary at Whittemore Park from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eric Siegel, 84 Milton Street. Um, I don't know if Mr. Siegel is with us tonight. He is and I've just promoted him to okay. panelist. Good evening, Mr. Siegel. Good evening, sorry, I had to maybe rejoin the meeting. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, we had we did something a little differently this evening. So thank, um, thank you for for uh, rejoining. So um, we have your special event permit application. Why don't you tell us uh, about the request and and there may be some new information that you have for us uh, based on what you put in the application, and uh, then we'll open it to the board for questions. Uh, sure. And comments. Sure. Um, as we all know, January sixth of this year there was an attempt to overturn the results of a uh, legitimate presidential election in the United States. So in observance of that, there are going to be vigils for democracy all around the country. There's at least 150 I know that are organized already and I'm sure that there will be a lot more as the time gets closer. Um, I wanna to add too that the events on January 6th of this year were not the beginning or the end of efforts to frustrate democracy. I don't think I need to go into details about gerrymandering and voter suppression, et cetera, et cetera, but those are all important issues. And I think that, the, that the, that's why we feel that it's very important to have a vigil in Arlington and not coincidentally right on the Paul Revere route as well, which I, I think is relevant. Um, I, this, this vigil, is initially sponsored by First Parish Unitarian Universalist. Um, and obviously we, we have some space on the same corner, but I really feel like uh, I would like this to be a town event, not a parish event. And now we, the, when I requested, I requested the lawn in front of the Dallin Museum. Is that the same as Whittemore Park? Yes, it is. is. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, so I, I requested that space because it's central. And because um, it, uh, it sends a message that this is a town event and not just an event of a, a subset of the people in the town. Um, just two related pieces to that. One is uh, that if you do grant permission for us to have the event there, I wonder if it'd be possible to leave the holiday lights around the tree until that date because that would just make the space a lot brighter and just you know less likely for people to bump into each other and second again if you approve this request if one of you could come and welcome us to the town you know welcome people to the town i think that would be ter terrific um, but uh, the, the essential request is can we use the space on january 6th the event will be from six to seven but i'm requesting it from five to seven thirty so we have time for setup and uh, tear down Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Siegel. I, I will turn now to the board for um, questions, comments, uh, and I will uh, start with Mrs. Mahan. Um, the 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, thank you to Mr. Siegel and members of your parish and others um, who will be helping sponsor this event. Um, I don't have any questions and I'd like to move approval. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurt. Second. Okay, Mr. Diggins. Um, yes, uh, I just have a question to me. I see that the police detail um, is, is unchecked for yes or no. Um, what's, what's your um, thinking about that, Mr. Siegel? Um, we'll contact the police and let them make a judgment about whether they think it's appropriate. Okay. All right. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy to approve this. I mean, and and um, and and I mean, you never know how people are going to respond to this. I mean, I'm all for it. I mean, but just be careful. I think to everyone. I mean, when we start seeing stuff on social media that we don't really know who's behind it. I mean, and so so don't I mean. I mean, if you see some negative stuff, I mean, just unless you really know who's behind it, I mean, don't assume I mean, that. Uh, there aren't other forces, you know, that are really trying to I mean, sow more divisions uh, amongst us. I mean, clearly what happened on, on the 6th I mean, happened. I mean, uh, there's no denying that, I mean, uh, and, and, and the motives behind it. But I mean, I think there's also evidence I mean, that there are forces from outside of this country that are trying to magnify the differences amongst us I mean, and, and, and help us help us, I use that word ironically, we focus on the differences amongst us rather than the things that you know, are similar between, amongst us and, and that our diversity is really a sign of our strengths. I mean, so so um, this is great. I'll try to make it, but I'm not sure that I can, but if I, I don't, it's not because of lack of support. So okay, thank, thank you for you. doing this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Thank you for organizing this. I think it's important and I'm happy to support it as well. Um, Mr. Chair, am I correct that um, we do we do we need to specify in the motion about leaving up the holiday lights, or is that something that the town manager can can uh, work out if possible? Hey, Mr. Chaplain, so I I'm going to guess that they aren't scheduled to come down before that date, anyways. <laughs> um, but they are both installed and removed by a private contractor, um, so there may be some limit to what I can do, but I'll. I'll see what I can do to make sure that they remain unless we're really locked into having them taken down per contract. Thank you. Yeah, of course. No other questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hamilton. And yeah, and I just have a comment, maybe um, perhaps suggesting a friendly amendment to the motion. Mr. Siegel, you mentioned yet at this point you haven't had any conversations with Chief Flaherty and you're anticipating, you don't know exactly how large the crowd is, but between that and the issue on the holiday lights. I wonder if we could um, include that that this you will coordinate with both the town manager and, and the chief of police um, just to, to check off that box that's part of your petition Absolutely. for the event. Is, is that acceptable to? Yeah. OK. And, and Mr. Mahan, is that OK as a friendly amendment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I should have said that sooner. I definitely accept both. Amendments. Okay, so um, yeah, and and otherwise I, I am with my colleagues and, and I um, support this as well. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan that was seconded by Mr. Hurd, Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Janice Fogel. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Siegel. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have two items this evening, the minutes of the meeting of December 6th, 2021, and a reappointment to the Transportation Advisory Committee, Jeffrey Max Studis, for a term to expire 12-31-24. On the consent agenda, uh, Mr. Diggins. Uh, I move approval, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, no questions. Mr. Hurd. I would just say that having served with Jeff and since he lives across the street from me, I'm very happy that he's, we're gonna continue to have his expertise on the traffic advisory committee. Great, and uh, I, I have no questions either. So on the motion by Mr. Diggins, uh, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Hunt. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 
Two nice pull. Okay. Next, we have a series of appointments in item six through 11. Items six through nine are appointments that were made by the town managers asking for our approval. Um, numbers 10 and 11 are board appointees to the ZBA. Uh, Mr. Hurd and I had conducted interviews on that. We'll get into that when we um, come to items 10 and 11. So if we can invite the individuals who are um, in item six or 11, and I will run down um, through each, each individual, but I will do 10 and 11 together and present on that. So, Mr. Chair, you're okay if I promote everybody and the board can take that? Yeah, and we'll just go through it serially. I, I, we'll have separate votes, but we'll we'll go through that individually. Um, so I will call appointment six, uh, or item six, to start conservation commission, associate commission, commissioner rather, for a term to expire 6-30-2024, Myra Schwartz. Uh, is Ms. Schwartz with us this evening? Okay. Good evening, Ms. Schwartz. I You just need to unmute yourself. Oh, right. I'm, not, I'm on the end now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, for joining us tonight. If you could just um, give us a little brief information about yourself and why you're interested in the Conservation Commission. Sure. Um, well, I've been a resident of Arlington for um, almost 20 years, and I've been involved with environmental issues here for um, ever since then. Um, I've been, I work for EPA. I just retired from EPA where I've been for almost 30 years. And so I've been very involved in um, even working with Arlington when I was at EPA. I worked a lot with um, the DPW with Wayne Chenard on stormwater issues. I've worked a lot with the Mystic River Watershed Association. And, um, and I've, I've been involved um, more uh, from a citizen's um, role working with the Watershed Association and the Arlington Land Trust as well as the um, a while back, the Friends of Spy Pond Park. And I was very instrumental in the restoration of the park in the early days. So I'm um, getting funding for that as well. So, um, so I've just had a commitment to environmental issues in Arlington for a long time, and I finally have time to devote to it. Um, so, um, and I'm, you know, I, I, I'm really honored to serve on this commission with all the very talented people on there that I, a lot of them I've worked with professionally as well. So um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll turn to the board, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. I'd like to move approval. And um, thank you for your willingness to serve. I was uh, fortunate to get to know some folks from the Conservation Commission when I was on the Community Preservation Act Committee. And I quickly learned just how important this body is in advocating for and protecting our natural resources. Uh, you're eminently qualified. We are lucky to have you uh, serving. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? I will gladly second this uh, thank motion. Thank you. Um, I, I uh, watched from afar, Ms. Schwartz, uh, in terms of her different hats that she's um, held here in the town of Arlington already. Um, I'm really excited by your background in planning and, and um, the Boston Harbor work, everything around that. <laughs> you do not have to stay for this agenda item, but agenda item 14, um, we're going to be hearing from soon, one of your colleagues on the Conservation Commission um, regarding uh, the flooding and pollution issues down at the Alwife. We have the NIFTES permit process coming up. We only get once every 15 years to comment on that. Um, okay. and we're gonna sort of be strategizing on that. And I'm pretty sure Mr. White, um, is the is a member of CONCOM's, I think it's like Water Bodies Working Committee. So um, they have a separate facet for that. I just highlight that because I see all your expertise and I, I'm <laughs> plugging you in where I shouldn't be doing that. Oh, that's so, all right. I might, I might want to stay on. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we might get to it quickly, but um, anyways. Okay. But it's not a requisite. I mean, you had my vote. You had <laughs> at hello. So thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, and thank you for your willingness to serve. You have a very impressive and very relevant breadth of uh, experience in your resume, and uh, I look forward to working with you, and just thank you for giving your time to the town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. And yes, as I read um, your your, um, your CV, me, my jaw just dropped lower, lower and lower. I was really impressed. <laughs> and and um, and, oh, and, and yes, me, I I I really am going to um, be in touch because I'm going to need a lot of assistance in, as I get learned up on the CSO issue. He, um, from your experience, it's clear that you have um, insights from lots of dimensions on this difficult problem. He, yeah. And and um, uh, so. So yeah, I mean, I think you can bring I me mean, a lot of light to this I meeting. So uh, I may not be able to take you out to lunch because of the pandemic, I me, mean, but but I'll make it up. I me, mean, but I, I mean, I, I really am serious. I am going to be in touch. I mean, to um, ask for advice and sources of things to read to get some real knowledge of what's going on um, with this, this this issue. So thank you for your willingness um, to work with the um, commission and 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 um, it's great having people like you. Thank you very you know, much. Yeah. I appreciate um, that. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, and I also support the um, the, the, the motion to approve that, uh, that Mr. Helm brought forward. And, and I was really impressed with your resume. And I have to say, I saw your resume first as you originally had uh, um, expressed some interest in being on the ZBA. And as I was reading your resume, I said, well, you'd even be a better fit for the Conservation Commission. And when I saw your name being put forward, I, I thought it was uh, just fantastic. So it's, it's just another example in our town of of just the expertise that people bring to boards. And thank you so much uh, for your willingness to serve. Thank you, thank you very much. And so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan for approval of uh, Ms. Schwartz's uh, appointment to the Conservation Commission, Attorney Hein. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Unanimous vote? Congratulations and best of luck and thank you again. Thank you very much. Okay, item seven is appointment to the Disability Commission for a term to expire June 30th, 2024. Um, Elena Gattaca Herrera, I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and um, why you're interested in being on the Disability Commission. Um, yes, thank you. Um, it's Ileana. Um, that's okay. I know it's like... Sorry about that. Um, so um, I am a resident of Arlington for about 12 years now, and um, I am the mother of a child with complex special needs and medical needs. Uh, first and foremost, I would say that's the way I always introduce myself as a mother. Um, I, um, I have a background in medicine, but I kind of switch careers somewhat because of my own experience of having a daughter with special needs. Um, and I have gained great expertise in the area of disability. I um, was able to get into a fellowship, the Land Fellowship Program. Um, and I'm very passionate about systemic change. I'm um, really passionate about serving the community of people with disabilities and working with them alongside. Um, and so, you know, I, I um, really, um, have a vision for having more opportunities for people like my daughter um, within their own communities. Um, and so it would be an honor for me to be a part of the commission and um, you know, gain more knowledge and also give my own level of expertise uh, in the areas that I have been able to gain um, expertise. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I'll turn to the board now, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I'd like to make a motion to approve Ms. Herrera's uh, appointment to the Disability Commission. And I just want to say from mom to mom, um, I ha have a similar family structure. Um, and sometimes I guess, I guess I'd say I'm painfully aware of what the issues these kids and adults face, but especially even more so highlighted um, by the pandemic and that particular constituency um, being able to not only find the services, but to create the environment that the services are beneficial, that unless you've kind of walked that road, you, it's, it's not quite understandable. So I'm so thrilled um, that you do bring that background as well as um, my day job as a court reporter. Um, and I that was at a deposition Zoom the other day and there's a physician down at UMass Memorial. I'm blanking on her name. And um, they, she started a program through UMass Memorial. It's a, like a new kind of family practice medicine, which recognizes um, 
services needed for young mothers and young families. And when I was reading your background, I said, and I, I can't blank, the board has actually started a new board certification for this sort of, she's an obstetrician, but then there's another name to her job that addresses this new specialized area that's slowly being recognized. So um, I know you'll be there for everyone, young and old with disabilities, but I really think you bring a lot to the table that's much needed. And I can tell you have the energy just with your being a mom duty. So my sincere thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. And I'll echo my colleagues comments and just thank you. I mean, this is one of, we have many, many boards and commissions in town, but this one is just so important to the work we do. And we often, tap this board for their opinions on a lot of the matters that come before this board. And it can be time consuming to get involved, but your passion for the subject is clear, both from your resume and from what we've heard from you today. So I do thank you for stepping up and serving on this board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. Yes, and, and we Again, very impressed you know, with, with what you bring to the table I mean, and, and, and in your background I mean, is, is, um, is touching and, and it, it makes us appreciate even more your willingness I mean, to participate in, in the board because I mean, life is, um, is challenging and people um, uh, who are differently able I mean, uh, I have extra challenges I mean, and, and it's, it's important that we have a commission that I mean, helps us to make I mean, life a little easier, I mean, um, and, and what I think we've all realized is that I mean, we all benefit hey, from this. I mean, the classic example are the curb cuts. I mean, they were originally created, I mean, to help people in wheelchairs, but people with strollers use them, I mean, um, and just those of us walking, I mean, uh, um, um, use them. So, so um, thank you very much. And if there's anything um, any of us on this board can do to assist, I'm sure we'll all be happy to respond to your call. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Heller. Thank you. Thank you so much for being willing to serve. Um, the Disability Commission is important for all the reasons that my colleagues have mentioned. And, and also, that we need you to keep the town accountable for real change, for measuring that change. You know, it, it, sometimes it's hard, sometimes things cost money. Um, and I think that among all the other important things the commission does, uh, keeping accessibility and awareness of, of everyone's needs front and center in everything we do is really important. And I know uh, looking at your resume and what you told us tonight that you will do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. And I echo the comments of my colleagues and, and uh, thank you for your interest and in, in just reading the objective in, in, in your resume, you can really see the the passion and, and the objective to, to working towards improving health outcomes for individuals with special health care needs and, and other um, complex disabilities. So thank you. And as Mr. Helmut said, yeah, we look to you to hold us accountable and, and um, really appreciate your willingness to, to do this important work. So on a um, motion by, uh, let's see, a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, Attorney Hein. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helma? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item eight is a Envision Arlington Committee, Caroline Murray, for a term to expire June 30th, 2024. Ms. Murray uh, here with us tonight. Mr. Chairman, I have not seen her um, join the Zoom yet, but the, the next appointment for Mr. Fenolosa, uh, he is here. If, if, if we want to move, if we could move to him and maybe Ms. Murray will be able to join shortly. Sure, okay, why don't we do that? So we'll go to item nine, um, Park and Recreation Commission, associate member, term to expire June 30th, 2024, Josh Fenolosa. Good evening, Mr. Fenolosa. Sorry, it happens to everybody. Yeah, it, it's uh, just to uh, have a mute issue. Yeah. The, the over under for me is about two times a night. So don't, don't, don't worry about it. 
Okay, good, good. Go right ahead. Now, I, I, we're still having, I don't know if there's an issue with your audio. Um, it does look like you're unmuted, but we still can't hear you. Uh, no, um, let's see, so we'll... Can anybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Is that better? Yes. Now I can't hear you. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, uh, if someone can, yeah, I can't hear you, but. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'm Josh Fenelosa. Uh, let's see, I've lived in Arlington for 17 years. I also own a business in Arlington. I'm an architect. Uh, I have three kids in the school system and my interest in parks and rec mostly developed during uh, the pandemic when my kids were finding lots of good gains about being outside and being out in open spaces. So um, I started spending more time uh, in the parks and recs meetings. My oldest son brought a petition to the commission for some mountain biking trails. And so we've been working on that. Um, so that's largely where my interest comes from. Great, thank you. Um, I'll turn to the board now, uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be happy to uh, motion to approve uh, Mr. Finalos's um, appointment. And, and I saw your kids' presentation to Parks and Recs for the the uh, the, the the mountain bike trails that was that was impressive. He, uh, I think um, his uh, um, his mom reached out to me he, uh, to let me know that was happening, and so so uh, so yeah, that, that was that was very impressive. Yeah, I, I don't I, I don't know where it has gone so far or or what the product, what the, what's happening, but but it's just really good to see you know, young people you know, taking the initiative, you know, and and so. Uh, that's that's great. So um, thank you um, for your willingness to step up um, on the Parks and Rec Commission and, and walk on board. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmer. Thank you. I happily second that. Appreciate your willingness to serve. This is Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, um, uh, yes, I have been following your young son's adventure um, and so impressed with uh, how he's organized himself and his constituency. And um, I've had several conversations with our park and rec director, Joe Connolly, um, who gave me all the nuts and bolts of it. And then thank you to Mr. Diggins for, uh, I know I drive, I definitely know I drive all of my colleagues crazy at one time or another, or perhaps too much information. Um, so thank you, Mr. Diggins for, um, following up on that as well as um, I know my other colleagues are also aware. Um, I'm thrilled that you're, you're uh, volunteering for this as well as, you know, having kids in, was it 369 or 6910? Um, I miss those days. I'm now talking about grandchildren. <laughs> I have in those ages, so it goes fast. So once again, sorry for being so verbose and thank you for your service. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. And thank you again for your willingness to serve. Hopefully, after we put some ARPA funds to work, you'll have some nice new playgrounds to take care of in the Parks and Recreation Commission and maybe some new fields. So, um, no, this is, I have young kids, two, six, and eight. So, the parks and the, re and the fields are where we spend most of our time. And it's so important to keep them up because you can see when they decline and it has an immediate adverse effect when that happens to our facilities. And you know, to, we're gonna have a lot of nice new facilities and it's important to keep up with them and make sure they're being used appropriately and be divided appropriately amongst the different uses in town. So thank you for serving and look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, and I also wanna um, thank you for your willingness to serve. And this is a really interesting time to be in the Parks and Recreation Commission because there will be funds to 
improved playgrounds and, and there's upcoming plans coming up and, and maybe some some new opportunities for um, whether it be Poets Corner or, or elsewhere in town. So um, best of luck. I support the motion and on a which is a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Mr. Diggins? Yes. I'm sorry. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Congratulations and thank you again. Um, did Ms. Murray join us? Okay, that was an appointment by the town manager. Well, town manager's appointment subject to our approval. Um, I think at this point, if, if we have a motion to, uh, for, for Ms. Murray. And Dr. Mr. Chair, are good? Yes. Um, yeah, even in her absence, I, I serve with Ms. Murray in, in uh, Precinct 12, a town meeting member yeah. know as well. Um, and uh, I'd be very happy to move approval based on my uh, knowledge of her commitment to the town and understanding of our government. Great, thank you. Do you have a second? A second. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, so a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Any further comments? Seeing uh, none. Uh, oh. Mr. Chair, just briefly, I've gotten three or four texts from um, residents and um, other town employees that have joined the meeting before. And for some reason, a handful of them seem to be having an issue saying that their email address is invalid. So she may have been trying to get in. Um, okay. I'm, go I'm gonna, you know, I'll follow up with the town manager. Ha ha, new thing for you. I'll follow <laughs> up with the town manager tomorrow and um, try to find out why that was. So she may be trying to get in and for some reason just hasn't been able to. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Hein. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Dan, let's vote. Thank you. Um, so as I said, items six through nine were town manager appointments subject to our approval. Item 10 and 11, Zoning Board of Appeals, that is a select board appointment. And um, I had asked Mr. Hurd to assist me with interviews to the individuals who had expressed interest in the ZBA. We had one full member opening and two associate members with the um, end of the MUGAR hearing. Uh, one, of the, the, one of the full members stepped down and both associate members stepped down with a number of people of press interest. And Mr. Hurd and I conducted interviews last week and the two individuals that we'd like to put before the board for approval for a full member, uh, Dan Riccadelli, I see him, he's here with us tonight for an associate member, Venkat Holy. Um, I don't see him right now. We spoke to him last week. He indicated that he would accept the appointment uh, if, if, if so voted. Uh, it turns out while we had a number of people who initially expressed interest, um, there was more interest in the full member position than we had spots available. So we still have an opening on the associate member, one associate member position. We will repost that in January and, um, and, and, and look for expressions of interest from the public. So Mr. Riccadelli is, is here this evening. Um, and we're here to answer any questions on his behalf or he can answer any questions. I told him he didn't have to make a statement or anything and people had spoken beforehand. So I don't know if you wanna say anything, Mr. Riccadell, I'm putting you on the spot, but uh, um, thank, thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm Dan Riccadelli. Uh, I've been a resident of Arlington for the last five years. Uh, I'm a registered architect in Massachusetts and uh, I've been working uh, in and around Boston for the last 13 years in that capacity. Uh, and so I often I often present to boards like the B, the ZBA uh, and be, uh, you know, excited to represent Arlington's interests and uh, be a board member. Great. Thank you very much. And, and um, so I will turn to my colleague who conducted the interviews for the motion, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. I'd like to approve Mr. Riccadelli's appointment for the full spot to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And thank you. We had a nice conversation a few days back and uh, I was very impressed by your knowledge and your relevant knowledge as an architect, but also just as your passion and your desire to get involved in the town. So I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. 
I will be happy to second that I mean, and to say um, I, I, I'm impressed by your, um, your leadership in the um, equity, diversity, and inclusion network at the, the BSA. You know? So, so you know, I think that'll bring I mean, a healthy perspective I mean, to, to um, the, the ZBA. Not that it needs it, it's just that you know, you'll add more to it. And, and, and I'm sure uh, if you haven't found it interesting already in other um, parts of your life or other episodes, you know, it's, 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 it's always very interesting to be on the other side of the table. You know, and, and, and if nothing else, I mean, I think it helps when you're on both sides of the table to appreciate the other person's perspective uh, a lot. And I think that'll go a long way to serving in the, the, the town you know, and, and the community at large, because I me, mean, a lot of our issues I mean really will affect I me, mean, not only Arlington, but the, the, the broader region. So thank you very much for your willingness to be on the ZBA. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmer. Thank you. Yeah, I'm reminded of something our town manager said earlier in the meeting about how you know, Arlington is just full of residents who are willing to step up and get involved. And, and I'm impressed that you're willing to serve after living here five years. Um, I hope you find it as rewarding as, as many of the rest of us have, and that you enjoy being on the other side of the desk or the Zoom, depending on uh, how the ZPA is meeting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. Ditto to my previous colleague's remarks. And um, I really am, I say this a lot, but I'm, I'm definitely excited by your background and expertise that you'll be bringing um, because every member of every board commission committee um, has an individual career strength um, while also being a resident of Arlington. And one of the things I said before, my day job's a court reporter, which is very dangerous because it gives me a little bit of knowledge on everything. Um, but one of my first jobs was Blazing Granite, 75 Federal Street. And I learned the importance of chalk lines. Um, and I, I know from, uh, your work as an architect and coordinating with the different crafts and specialties, um, not on, only around the areas of schedule, but also safety. Um, I really feel you'll be able to bring that because you'll know to look for it. You'll know when it's not there um, because um, I'm a union member, but not with 103, <laughs> 2222. But one of the things we're all concerned about is workplace safety and of course, one of my most recent cases is the uh, Consigny Schnabel WL French fatality. They had at the Wuppen Public Library. <clears throat> and there were things that I feel um, if Arlington had, had a job like that coming in between our building um, department inspector employees, as well as ZBA, and now especially with you on that um, commission okay, board, um, would be able to recognize people in the industry, there were obvious red flags, you know, people know OSHA 10, OSHA 30, but anything beyond that, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for you to have, you know, keep that expertise as you have in the forefront. Um, and I'm really excited that, you know, I try to stay out of other boards, commission committees business. Um, so when you're here, you're captured for me. So I have to, you're not captive, you're captured. I take advantage of the opportunity, but as with anything, um, I'm always available um, if there's any way I can help or any way else, but you don't need my help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, and, and I also, I was very impressed with your resume and with your enthusiasm for the job. And I should tell the other members that um, I did learn last week that we had been asked to fill these slots. And uh, not only were we asked to fill the slots, but we were reminded to tell each candidate that if you do get appointed Monday night, your first meetings tomorrow night, December 21st. So, and Mr. Riccadelli uh, agreed to that uh, short schedule and, and uh, we really thank you for that. This is a really technical board and, and I don't know you'll bring your expertise to it. So thank you for your willingness to, to, to serve on the ZBA. Um, so on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Congratulations, Mr. Riccadelli. Thank you again. Thank you so much. 
I don't know if Mr. Tolley is, if he may have had a problem with the Zoom. Um, I can, Mr. Hurd and I can, um, we speak a little bit about him. We also had the opportunity to interview Mr. Holy last week. He is an architect as well. Um, and he has uh, been very interested in getting involved in the town and, and actually has checked in quite frequently on various CBA meetings. So um, I'll go through the same order on, on this one um, and I'll turn to Mr. Hurd. And this is for an associate member position on the CBA. Yep, uh, and I was also impressed with the, our conversations with uh, Ben Cat. And I think he brings up some really relevant experience and passion from the conversation that we had with him briefly a few days ago. And I know sometimes we like to have people before us, but I would just note, as Ms. the chair alluded to, if if for some reason somebody in the ZBA can't attend the meeting tomorrow, they can't meet unless they have both of these appointments. Um, so I, I would move approval of this appointment for the associate position. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. I'll happily second that. And, and I mean, I have a lot of respect for those who who serve in associate positions, you know, because to a certain extent, I mean, they, they, their level of passion and commitment uh, is is at least as strong as those who to, who get to vote. I mean, and of course, they are pretty much the farm team for um for these um, committees, boards, you know, commissions. And I guess in the case, in this case, the board. Um, all I'll say is looking at at his um his resume. I look at one chestnut place and I dream. I just dream. You know, uh, he's like it's got views of Boston and 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 it's like that's an impressive structure. I mean, it's, I'll just leave it at that. You know. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmer. Thank you. No comments. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you. Happy to support. Okay. Yeah. And I am as well. And as Mr. Hurt said, we're impressed with Mr. Holy's experience and his interest in, in, in serving and, um, and willingness to start tomorrow night <laughs> as well on, on short notice. So uh, again, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Hyde. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmer? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Nanis vote. Great, thank you. Um, item 12, under licenses and permits, this is our annual license renewals for approval. I will read all of the, the licenses. There were several documents that we received. There were some comments from various departments on some of the renewals, but it is license renewals for contractor drain layer, class one, class two, class two non-premises auctioneer, lodging houses innkeepers, secondhand dealer, public entertainment, automatic amusement, food vendor, common victua, 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 sorry, wine and malt beverages only restaurant, all alcohol restaurant, all alcohol club, theater license, all alcohol package store, and sidewalk cafe. These licenses are granted on an annual basis and um, the, the renewal would, would start in January. Um, and so on licenses renewals, I will start with Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, I move approval. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, Mrs. Mahan? Um, I will second it, Mr. Chair, and I have a sort of off the beaten path question that I'd like to ask through you to the town manager, just very briefly, because um, I'm looking at all these businesses and I know that, um, Am I correct? Is the Board of Health meeting tonight or a different night to um, discuss any possible additional or bringing back um, COVID-19 um, with the businesses, uh, COVID-19 measures? So the board met last Wednesday evening and isn't scheduled to meet again until January 11th. And I was gonna talk a little bit under new business about okay. what they might be considering. Okay, that's fine. Then that let's wait for new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Did I second that? Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Um, no comments. Okay, Ms. Diggins. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I did notice on the Board of Health that it seems that the um, the listing for the establishment that closed um, um, is and those that are that open. 
um, it should be switched feed. Uh, so so um, it's just a minor um, um, administrative mean, uh, correction. Mean. And I, I just, I have a question. I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Um, Mr. Chaplain, that I didn't ask this earlier. I mean, maybe you should wait until then. Uh, to our next meeting. Um, but in the case of um, the establishment on Park Ave where they, there was a complaint about um, lawnmowers, and, um, we, now it was recommended that we approve and I'm fine with that. And, uh, I was just kind of wondering, do you have any, the fact that it was flagged, you know, do we have a sense of the, the nature? I mean, clearly it's not illegal or I imagine the police department would have said something needs to change about this, but do we have a sense of what's going on there? I would say a few things, and then I would, um, with the board's uh, chair's permission, defer to Attorney Heim about the proper way to potentially pursue any avenues of enforcement. But over the years, my recollection has been that we have had to enforce or take some enforcement action against that property for blocking the public right of way and the sidewalk oh. Oh. with materials that have been stockpiled, stored, or on display on that property, as well as the potential storage or at least suspected storage of hazardous materials and some of the mm. drums or larger containers on site. Mm. Um, there may be some other violations that inspectors have seen over the years, but mostly my recollection again is that we have taken action when the items being stored on that property flow off the property onto the public right of way mm. and the sidewalk. Um, whether any of those amount to a revocation or non-renewal, um, I would defer to town council if he has a thought on that. Okay. Um, I, 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 I would like to hear from town council on that because now that I hear that it's blocking sidewalks, I mean, that's changed the tone of things for me a lot, you know? Sure. I, yeah, and I, I had some conversations about this property with, with attorney Hein, but I, I'll want to turn to him now and then I have some comments on that particular property as well, but uh, sure. turning time. Mr. DeCourcy, would you like me to sort of rehash, or not, not rehash, but outline what we discussed? Sure. So in, in response to the manager and Mr. Diggins and some of the other board members' comments, you know, the board has a couple of different options. If the property is in active non-compliance, the board can grant the permit, uh, uh, can grant the renewal subjects to conditions to be rectified at a certain point in time and essentially have that permit come back before the board if those conditions aren't met. Uh, the other thing the board can do is essentially say, we will only grant this renewal if you meet X, Y, and Z conditions by a date certain. And until that point, you don't essentially have a renewal. Um, I think the board has pretty broad discretion where there's uh, any violation of um, uh, certainly public health um, regulations or town bylaws, including things like obstructing public ways. But I think the board has a little bit of room here to either say, we're just gonna renew this and we're gonna trust that our enforcement entities will essentially rectify the situation uh, to uh, renew with condition that says, rectify this by a date certain, or the board will be reconsidering your, um, your license well, and then finally, probably the most extreme version would be, you don't have a license and we're not gonna renew it unless and until you rectify these conditions. So on the, on the spectrum of possibilities, again, there's sort of trust uh, that the town enforcement entities will take care of it. Um, the midline is we're gonna approve your renewal, but rectify these conditions. Uh, we wanna hear a report of compliance or we'll bring you back before the board. And then finally, we're not going to renew you until you meet A, B, and C conditions. I'm not sure we have enough specific information for that, la that latter option. Um, it would be uh, probably preferable to have a little bit more lined up before we said we're not renewing uh, until you meet A, B, and C. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Han. Mr. Diggins? Well, Mr. Chair, I mean, since you have had some, some discussion about this, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. I mean, we, before I would recommend the, the harshest action, I would like to hear from the owner establishment, get some sense of the other person's point of view and explanation perhaps of why they are repeatedly um, doing this. And maybe there's something the town can do to help. I don't know, but I, mean, I try not to be like really hard, harsh, I mean, without at least hearing from the person, but I'm definitely hearing, interested in hearing what you um, are thinking, Mr. Chair, before recommending anything. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, so 
we, as you can see here, there the inspectional services and the planning department both identified this property for various complaints that had been received, overcrowded with lawnmowers over the past year. And I don't know if other members have received calls or emails from residents. I've received a number of calls on, on this property. Um, and I don't feel that the harshest line is the appropriate one to take, but I do feel that it is hard for our, our enforcement entities and, and in talking this over with attorney Heim early today, I, I would prefer the, the middle route where we basically renew, we're not holding up the license, we give a date and if there is an improvement at the site, then we ask the owner to come in before us because this has gone on for a long time. The, the, the thing I get really nervous about at this site at 19 Park Ave, right over the bridge is there's a number of tires that get stored right up against the bridge. And as things get moved, the tires have actually been on the edge of the bridge. And it just is a potentially very dangerous situation with the bikeway right below. Um, and and with, with the, the lawnmowers and the snowblowers, it's, it's an issue too. It perhaps is gonna become more of an issue in the back of the site because of the housing corporation of Arlington property, because it butts up um, against their property, not against their second building, but it's it's there. And I think there are some issues at this property that that clearly need to be addressed. I don't feel that we should deny the license, but I don't think we should place it strictly on our enforcement entities to this point, because I think it's, it's difficult for them. So um, at least with that one, I, I feel like, you know, we may want to um, consider the second intermediate step that the attorney Heim outlined. Uh, Mr. Helmer? Yeah, I, I think I'd like to amend my motion uh, along those lines. Um, and I think my only question is what's the best uh, language and expectation. Um, one question I have is, do we know, is there currently a non-compliance situation? Do we know one way or the other? It, it currently, if there's an if if they're in compliance or yeah, if, if there if there if there is a compliance issue now um, at, at the present time, I'm, I'm just trying to think. Do we say you know the situation to be resolved, or if it's undis, if it's more of a longstanding issue, would it be productive to to require that there be um, an action plan or you know an agreement with the town manager perhaps, or you know what to to sort of address the long the various. Um, issues in the past and you know a plan to rectify that I you know I'm open to guidance about how to you know what how exactly what exactly we're going to say okay maybe I could turn to Mr. Chapdelaine my understanding is that the, the, the property from time to time things will improve to a certain degree yeah. and it may um, get to a point where a, a inspector needs to go out there so at, at any one time maybe okay today next yeah. week may not be is that what you have found Mr. Chapdelaine that is exactly what I would have said. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so, you know, I, I'm happy to have had this refined, but I think, you know, to to require that there be an agreement, if that would, would that serve the town manager's purposes in, in, in helping to ameliorate that situation, um, a discussion and agreement with, you know, for, you know, for um, how to avoid these recurring problems. In, in the past, uh, I'd, I'd be comfortable with that. I, if council thinks that's something we could legally have teeth with, yeah, attorney Heim, would you prefer a date, attorney Heim, to, to see improvement or 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 or, or an agreement? I did just, yeah, whatever you think, whatever you think. Is. I think I'd like to see both paired together. So, what I'd like to see is you know that the um approval uh, of the renewal of this license is conditioned upon uh, satisfactory uh, compliance with any outstanding issues and uh, a demonstrated uh, plan for managing these issues um, going forward by a date certain. And I, I think that you can pick a date with a little bit of time um, to be fair to these folks, but I think from what the manager is describing, what all of you are describing, there's both uh, a tendency for acute issues to develop and then for these things to recur. And I think it's in everybody's best interest, including the operator, to not have you know, repeated enf enforcement calls, but rather develop a management plan for these issues so that we're not doing this um, in yeah. the middle of a permit cycle, but we're, 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 we're doing it when the board has some leverage, but also there's an opportunity for clarity. So it was a long-winded way of saying, 
I would uh, say that you should have fixed the date certain uh, for basically a report to say that, you know, we're satisfied with their efforts to um, improve these conditions now and outline how they're going to prevent future violations. Yeah, that, that sounds really good to me. Um, I would welcome the um, guidance from my colleagues at the town manager on and pick the date. Can I ask, is the second or last Friday in February from the town's perspective and what it needs to do and how long that would take? Is that too ambitious? Is that um, too much time? I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, starting in January, we have the month because I want to give time for both sides, um, the owner and the town. Um, whether the second Friday or last Friday in February, uh, I guess I would ask the chair or the town manager that that's a good date or advise me otherwise. Yeah, Mr. Chaptelin, do you have any thoughts on the date? Uh, I mean, I, I, I feel like the, the last Friday in, in February would make sense. Maybe just, you know, just giving that extra couple of weeks in case snow hinders mm -hmm. any cleanup or efforts towards compliance, just giving us a couple more weeks might be helpful. And so I would just, but it's Mr. Helmut's motion. I don't want to hijack oh, it. No, but that, that's just kind of my. I'm I'm thinking of the process and all that. So and yeah, as well, you are, thank you. I, thank you I invited the hijack. A friendly hijack is always is always welcome. Um, yeah, and you know, and I think I think what I like about a, a written plan a, a agreement is that we're not just saying, uh, you know, do better this year. I think we want something concrete in writing. Um, you know that that will specifically address. Uh, the nature of the complaints that we've had and an acknowledgement that there's a way that, you know, what this is what we're gonna to do to keep having kind of the repeat visits from the inspectional services. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'd amend my motion to conditionally apply that, uh, approve uh, the renewal um, conditioned on um, a correction of any uh, of outstanding uh, problems and uh, the acceptance by the town manager of a, a written plan to uh, address uh, and to prevent recurrence of these issues in the coming year. Okay, and that, that would be by February yeah. 20th. By February, yes, thank you, by the last, yes, thank you. Okay, okay, great. And thank uh, you all for helping with that. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hamlet. Is that, uh, Ms. Mahan, is that, if that's acceptable, we'll take a second, if you'll accept that amended as a, as, as a second there? No, definitely. Yes, I just, I'd rather. Yeah. I can't, right. I can't do two Zoom meetings and check my calendar as adeptly as the chair can, and that's why he's chair and I'm not. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, and, and before we come to the vote, I do want to say one thing on Mr. Diggins' comment on the Board of Health. That has been corrected on the online version. That was caught earlier today, but if you downloaded it earlier, it didn't reflect that. But if you go on the online version now, it, it is accurate in terms of the closed and the open um, categories. Um, so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, it's approval of everything outright except for 19 Park Ave, which is the conditional uh, approval with the dates um, to have a plan um, submitted in agreement by February 25th. Um, Mr. Diggins? And, and, and I will vote for it, but I just want to send a signal you know, about how I feel about sidewalks, I mean, and this compliance thing. I mean, for me, I mean, the sidewalk, if it's blocked, should be clear tomorrow, you know, uh, and, and for me, I, mean, I, I would ask for a plan, you know, within the next, Two to three weeks, because if they're just violating, I mean the 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 permit, I mean the rules, I mean it's like, I'm not too big into leniency uh, on that, but but like I said, I'm going to go along with this because I I I, I get it, you know, I mean, and so I just wanted to send a signal. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, the sidewalk is not blocked right now. It, okay. there, there are other issues, and we've got some tire issues on the side of the property, but the the sidewalk is clear right now right. from the property. Great. Okay. All right, uh, Attorney Hunt. Mr. Hurd? I would note that he, he, I'm happy to, that we are taking care of this, but he is one of the most delightful business owners in Arlington. So I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to work with him. Hi. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Well, thanks for that, Mr. Hurd. I appreciate that. Yes, that calms me down. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, next is open forum. 
except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Um, so we'll open, open forum and Mr. Chapdelaine, if there's anybody who wishes to be heard. Right now there was, uh, there's one hand raised by Patricia Warden. Good evening, Mrs. Warden. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, as you said, Patricia Warden, Precinct 8. Um, I did want to let you know that, I'm sure you do know, that the State Department of Housing and Community Development have just come out with written rules referencing recent legislation and those rules if carried out would be devastating for east arlington they demand a huge increase in housing density in the entire area within half a mile from alewife mbta station that area includes up to approximately the Hardy School and um, with um, things like wetlands, Thorndike Field and Magnolia Park, even to a small part of Massachusetts Avenue. Um, to avoid a takeover of that attractive and very cohesive community uh, by developers of apartments, buildings and towers, please direct the Arlington Planning Department to work energetically to design zoning to protect East Arlington. That requires your very strong direction since the planning department has for years been moving in the opposite direction. On another matter, East Arlington also deserves an end to the combined sewer overflow problem which has gone on for too long and affects hundreds of Arlingtonians and thousands of neighboring residents in the well-financed city of Cambridge. Surely the town could negotiate an end to this problem, which is an environmental and public health hazardous situation. Surely since our town manager, and congratulations, Mr. Chapdelin, surely he, since he is a member of the Metro Mayor's Coalition, and Vice President of Metropolitan Area Planning Council and President of the Massachusetts Municipal Association, surely he can help bring an end to the combined sewer overflow problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Warden. Is there anybody else for open forum? There are no, uh, just one, one additional, oh, a hand went up and then quickly went down. I'm okay. Um, there's one, one additional, uh, two hands now, Leah Broder and Linda Verone. Okay. And that will, uh, well, two more and that, that will be it this evening for, uh, for open forum. So Ms. Broder. Hi. Um, Forgive me if I'm talking out of order. I too wanted to speak to the combined sewer overflows and I see it's on the agenda. So do I just hold my, okay. I was, why don't, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, you're here. Why don't you, you can make your statement now because I'm not sure where that, I, I know we're gonna have a presentation but I'm not sure how much time we'll have for you know full 
public participation on that. So why don't you go ahead and and um, okay. and, and, uh, and, and speak. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Leah Broder, 44 Michael Street. I'm a town meeting member for Precinct 1 um, uh, and a resident and neighbor to the Alewife Brook, which I use on a daily basis and um, participate with neighbors in an annual cleanup. There is a very active neighborhood group that takes care of this land. Um, and we, I see it um, as a not just an open space resource, but an integral part of our pedestrian and bike um, network in, in town, um, and as well as a critical piece of habitat. Um, so the bird watching and um, observ observation of wildlife there is incredible. And to as I've learned recently um, about the extent of the combined sewer overflows, I think this is a serious public health threat. Um, especially as we see water levels rise, storminess rise through climate change, um, it seems just a matter of time for that bank for that brook to over um, spill its banks. And knowing that there's untreated sewage in the water means that there's a risk now to our whole neighborhood. As um, so, I want uh, I just wanted to add my voice to the others who are um, asking you all to do your best. Um, to uh, to lobby for um, an elimination of the combined sewer overflows from the Cambridge, Somerville, and MWRA um, outfalls. So thank you very much, and thank you all for your service. Thank you, Ms. Broder. The next speaker is Linda Barone. Hello. Good evening, Ms. Veron. Hi. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time for me to bring this up, but I'm um, one of the people that's concerned about the crosswalk on Chestnut Street. And I'm not seeing that on the um, agenda that I'm looking at. Is there some, well, I know you can't answer questions on this thing, but I just want to, to let you know that, that my interest in um, strong concern about this issue is continuing. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Ms. Ferron. Okay, and that concludes open forum for this evening. Uh, moving on to traffic rules and orders and other business. Item 13, creation of semi-quincentennial committee. Uh, John V. Hurd, Select Board, uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was actually embarrassed when I read the, the agenda for tonight. I feel like I was plagiarizing. So I should at the outset say that Mr. Currow, our former colleague had reached out to me in the process of, of creating this committee. We had originally um, took an, taken a vote to create the committee then with the, the, with the uh, caveat that I was gonna come back with the parameters of the committee. So Mr. What you see before you in the agenda was drafted by Mr. Caro based on a uh, review of the charge of the Lexington Committee, which has a similar the, um, similar charge to what the Arlington Committee will be. So we, he, um, he took it and he massaged some of the appointments to fit Arlington's um, committees that we have here and to, to fit Arlington's needs. But I do want to acknowledge his work in uh, creating that document. I, I told him if he wanted to come today and and take the credit for himself, he could. But he had a conflict tonight. So, um, so this is the committee that we that we're proposing for the semi quincentennial committee, and it is it still seems far away. But there's a lot of planning that has to be done. So the committee does really have to get going pretty quickly, especially with some potential. Um, funding sources to help defray some of the costs for the celebration. So we are looking for the board's approval of the proposed committee per parameters with open to any friendly amendments that the board might have. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I will be happy to um, make a motion to approve uh, the creation of the 
uh, all, well, the, um, the parameters as spelled out here and by um, Mr. Kiro, and I wouldn't dare amend anything that he's written. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmut. Thank you, and I'll second that. Um, this is really important, uh, first of all, for the public to understand what, what happened in these events, but I think that Arlington has, for a long time, kind of gotten short shrift from historical um, awareness and, and tourists. Uh, really important things happened here. We know this here in town, and so I, I love the creation of this committee to, to really shine the spotlight on uh, the important part that, that Arlington played. Uh, I will note, notice that there is a, a spot for a select board member to be appointed. And when the time comes, Mr. Hurd, I have a nomination. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? Um, definitely no, no questions. Uh, I don't know what the screening guidelines are gonna be. Perhaps one of them is in advance one members of this committee to practice saying that really big hundred dollar word before, before their first attempt at an actual meeting because although it is kind of bring some brevity to it so no questions thank you thank you mrs mahan i was practicing it all afternoon <laughs> uh, okay and i i support this as as well on uh, no amendments no further comments so an emotion by mr diggins seconded by mr helmuth attorney Heim. Heard? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmet? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Janet's vote. Okay. Um, item 14 is a discussion of the CSO outfall along Alewife Brook, both the ones in Cambridge and Somerville. Um, Diane and Mahan, Vice Chair. I know we're going to have a, a presentation tonight from, from Ms. Anderson, but I will turn to Mrs. Mahan to begin the discussion. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm gonna try to be as brief as possible. Um, I was involved with the last NIPTES permit process um, regarding the CSO discharges and outfalls um, 15, 16 years ago. I advocated strongly with um, the East Island Good Neighbor Committee and uh, friends of the Little River and groups in Cambridge to eliminate all the CSOs. Um, we were successful with getting two eliminated and we're told, you know, doing all five wasn't in their 50 year plan. And, you know, it's an admirable goal and blah, 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 blah. Um, and so this past year, I started having conversations first with the town manager and the chair um, about um, first inquiring, I had a feeling NIPTES was gonna come around um, but then also um, had a, a extended conversation with town council before our goals meeting, select board goal meeting, um, to start thinking about not just the NIPTES permit process avenue of relief, um, but perhaps others. And we discussed it at our goals meeting. Um, and I'm, I'm also asked for this agenda item for Ms. Anderson and Mr. White, who's on our Conservation Commission, um, who co-chair, a co-founded, I believe, the Save the Alwife um, Committee, which again, a lot of great expertise. I um, attended a Zoom meeting um, a week or two ago. Again, I'm, I want Ms. Anderson and Mr. White to speak to their efforts because I agree with all of them. Um, I made sure at the goals meeting, um, what I said was I didn't want to steal the thunder or flooding <laughs> and let them explain themselves. But I just want to let um, Kristen and Ms. Anderson and Mr. White and members of the Save the Alwife Committee, I have I had asked my colleagues after we all discussed it because flooding, sewage, and um, climate, future potential climate change in, uh, issues down there will be exacerbated. So we have, have sort of a NIPTES Alwife per, permit placeholder in our goals. And that, I said after tonight, then, with you and the chair and the town manager could kind of further redefine, redefine the points. Um, so I did cite, you know, NIPTES MWRA and speak with the chair, who's also an attorney, our town council and Adam brought up EPA. And um, the other thing I did it, cause I, I'm, I was, I'm gonna have to ask unless Ms. Anderson or Mr. White knows, 
if we could get any relief under the current, um, I think it's Boston Clean Harbor Act um, guidelines out there. So, um, and with that, I don't want to um, belabor the point when I know Ms. Anderson and Mr. White, I'm, I'm confident they have prepared a presentation and will be much more informative. And then after that um, presentation's over, after I hear from my, all my colleagues, then I'll put my two cents in again at the end in terms of any future action steps. And I understand if what it is, is we get a lot of information tonight and we need time for the chair, the manager and town council to really parse it out the right way. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And I see Ms. Anderson is with us. Before she starts, I, I had a nice conversation with her over the weekend. I wanna thank her for her commitment to uh, um, with her advocacy on this issue. And, and for those of you who haven't seen it, seen it, she made a very impressive presentation to the Cambridge Finance, uh, the Finance Council, not Finance Committee, but a, a subcommittee of their city council regarding this issue. So I will uh, turn it over to Ms. Anderson for her presentation, and then we can have comments or questions from the board. Thank you. Um, I'm, my name is Kristen Anderson. I live at 12 Upland Road West. Um, thank you, Arlington Select Board, Town Council, and Town Manager for giving us your attention this evening. Thanks especially goes out to Chair DeCourcy and Ms. Mahan for working to get Save the Alewife Brook on the agenda. We appreciate the hard work that the town has done over the years to address the problems in the Alewife Brook. David White is with me here tonight. David is a longtime Arlington Conservation Commissioner and member of their Water Bodies Working Group. David and I founded Sound Save the Alewife Brook because attention needs to be brought again to the problems of pollution and flooding in the Alewife as we are beginning to see the effects of climate change. A major effort was started 20 years ago to clean up Alewife Brook and close the combined sewer outfalls, AKA CSOs, which release untreated sewage water during storm events from Cambridge and Somerville. Through their the combined efforts of MWRA and the adjacent communities, including Arlington, many improvements were made and six of the 12 CSOs discharging into the brook were closed. Quite unexpectedly, we are now seeing that those great achievements from the first plan to close the CSOs are losing ground to climate change with its wetter rain season and more frequent and dramatic storms. What we once thought would be an 85% reduction in CSO discharges is now completely eclipsed by the effects of climate change. In 2021, there have been 50 million gallons of sewage contaminated water discharged into the Alewife Brook. This is the same volume of sewage contaminated storm water discharge as compared to the base year of 1997, which is the year that the MWRA chose as the design year in its original long-term CSO control plan. During flood events, unsafe and untreated sewage water from the CSOs flows into the homes and yards and parks of our East Arlington neighborhoods. A review of FEMA flood maps reveals there are an estimated 1,200 East Arlington residents, 3,500 Canterburyans, and 300 Belmont residents living in the Little River, Alewife Brook, 100-year floodplain. Stormwater discharges are also a problem that needs attention, but the causes and solutions are different. More work must be done. By organizing and collaborating with area residents and officials in Arlington, Cambridge, Belmont, and Somerville, we can achieve a regional political solution to this problem. The solution must be modernization of the 19th century combined sewer infrastructure that discharges sewage contaminated water into the Elwife Brook. The sanitary and storm sewers can be separated so that sewage does not mix with storm water. Then the remaining CSOs can be closed. Green infrastructure must also be part of the solution. Storm water can be naturally filtered and cleaned by trees and plants. Wetlands vegetation will slurp up groundwater as the roots aid infiltration and send the rainwater into the water table where the water becomes a resource rather than a waste product. The Elwife Brook can become a safe place for area residents to live near, as well as being a safe place to enjoy boating and fishing in the summer and ice skating in the winter. It can support wildlife habitat for fish and eels, which in turn could feed great blue heron. It can be an asset rather than a liability. 20 years ago, select board member 
Diane Mahan was working on these same issues with Senator Will Brownsberger, then a Belmont selectman on the Tri-Community Flood Group. The Tri-Community Flood Group serves as a model for regional collaborative success. That group effectively solved the repeated 100 year flood events that were plaguing the Alewife area neighbors every two to three years. We would like to hear Ms. Mahan's ideas about making improvements in the Alewife. And we are here this evening to respectfully ask for your support. There are crucial regulatory deadlines coming up as well as once in a lifetime federal funding opportunities that are meant for this purpose. Save the Alewife Brook could benefit immensely from the town's support. And specifically, and here's my laundry list of, of uh, requests, um, communicate with adjacent communities and the MWRA and work with them in addressing the problem. Perhaps revitalize the tri-community group that was effective in addressing the issues. Request information from Somerville and Cambridge about the scope and costs of completing the CSO separation work. Help us to advocate for state and federal funding to address the problem. Provide legal assistance to help us evaluate the current agreements and the upcoming hearings and filings. Provide engineering assistance to help us evaluate the stormwater studies and other technical documents, as well as the recent discharges. Please show your support by working with Save the Elwife Brook on this important concern that affects many Arlington residents. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Anderson. And um, I don't know, and maybe you can send this to us later, but one of the things that is coming up at the end of this month is the requirement of the MD, MWRA to, to release a water a performance report on the various CSOs. And, and I think that's the next milestone that is ahead of the MWRA as part of this process. And, and um, I think what we're gonna find here is that what's going on in Airwife Brook, it far exceeds what they thought for the control year and, and certainly the, the current conditions as of several years ago. But if I could ask you maybe at some point the next day or two to, if you could send send us that presentation, the PowerPoint that you had from that presentation, because it does lay out some of the timelines nicely in terms of what's coming up. Sure, absolutely. And there is actually already a draft of that report um, that I saw. Um, unfortunately, it is for the year 2019, um, not 2021. Okay, all right. Thank you. But, so, but it would be great to have help understanding it. Sure. Um, okay, so why don't I turn to the board now for, for questions or, or comments. And, um, and then Mrs. Mahan let us off, so I'll have her go last in the, in the order here. Um, and I'll start with Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. It's nice to uh, sort of meet you in person. Um, and I, wa I want you to know my knee is all better. I'm sorry I had to miss the uh, the walk that you did uh, a few months ago. So if you do another one in, after the weather, I would be very happy to go see the show and tell. Uh, all for right. this. Uh, so thank you for, for doing this. This is, this is tough work. It's a long slog and it is so important. And I'm glad that you are you know, calling out the big, the big factor that's changing and that is the climate, you know, and that that has blown all the benchmarks, uh, you know, out of the water, so to speak. And um, I guess my question for you is, uh, you know, first of all, you know, I will certainly have my commitment and I'm sure my colleagues um, to doing what we can. And, and, you know, there's very little that Arlington itself can do, as you, as you have said. Um, do you have any advice for us about the best leverage that we have and, and, and citizens of the Commonwealth have uh, to talk to these communities who are in a position to, to spend the federal money? Um, to do something about this upstream, you know, what, what's the best leverage that we have to convince them to do the right thing and to make this a priority? Well, I, I think that um, times have changed over the decades and um, uh, people who uh, live and uh, in Cambridge and in Somerville and the um, elected officials who represent them have changed their ideas. And I think that the main thing is that we need to let them know that this, they don't, I don't even think they know that this problem exists. I don't even think a lot of Arlington residents remembered that this existed because this problem it's been going on for so long and it's it's sort of out of sight out of mind mm -hmm. um so i think just um 
bringing it to their attention uh, it, it will be helpful. Um, and also uh, understanding uh, some of the, the debate behind it. Um, yeah. And also it, it's really important that we get federal money for this because if we don't get federal money for this, the um, MWRA has a mechanism to pay for it. And that mechanism is to pass the costs along to the ratepayers. Well, the ratepayers in Chelsea and Everett can't afford to pay more for water and they can't afford to pay for uh, sewer infrastructure uh, upgrades in Cambridge and Somerville. Yeah, Th thank you. I'm glad I asked. I think that uh, you really raise a, a good point that the, the people, the people uh, who, and bought charge of their own governments in several in Cambridge, I think largely will care about this. And so getting the word of them is, is, is a great idea, um, as well as working with our state delegation. Arlington is fortunate that one of our state representatives also represents part of Cambridge, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Rogers. So, you know, I know he's involved with this and, you know, has, has a connection there. So, um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. Here are the uh, thoughts and questions from my colleagues. And thanks again for your, for your work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, usually I'm all about the questions, I mean, but, um, but you know, I know so little. You know, I, I need to learn a lot you know, before I really have um, intelligent questions. Uh, so I'll just ask a general question. Um, to what extent is this a political problem and to what extent is this a technical problem? Um. I don't know. Let me answer the, the technical the technical problem question first. I don't know how much of a technical problem it is. Um, and th this is one of the reasons that we're here tonight, because if we could better understand the scope and costs of uh, upgrading the sewer infrastructure in Cambridge and Somerville, uh, it would be it would be really helpful for us to know that it these this this sewer system it's literally over 100 years old. We have the technology, uh, Arlington has never had CSOs. We have the technology to not be sending pollution, sewage pollution into the Elwife Brook. So, um, but, I, but I don't know the scope of it. I don't know how, you know how much it's gonna cost and what kind of technical challenges lie ahead. Um, as far as how how much of a political problem is it, um, I don't know how much of a political problem it is with Somerville. I think that Cambridge is going to be um, helpful. Uh, I'm not sure about Somerville. I'd like to think that they'll want to do the right thing, but um, I'm not sure. All right. Thank but you very much. I'm sorry. How, okay. So you know how problems that towns have often get pushed off to their edges. Um, that's what's happened here. Cambridge and Somerville have pushed their sewage off to the edge of town. Um, and that I think is, is part of the political problem. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll be following up you know, uh, with the town manager and with um, the, the, the new commissioner uh, that, that we have on the Conservation Commission and with you, you know, so I have a, a lot of learning to do, you know, and so I look forward to it. That's we, can get, we can get you up to speed really fast. You have my, I think you have my email address. I mean, send me links, PDFs, everything sure. you got. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I'll move receipt of the presentation if appropriate. And then I would just say that like Mr. Diggins, I, I'm certainly not the expert on CSOs on this board, but I am really happy for the presentation. I, I wanna thank Ms. Anderson and Mrs. Mahan for her years of advocacy on this issue. And it's something that I can, is definitely piqued my interest and it's something that I'd like to get involved with and learn more about because the idea of so untreated storage in any water body is really disheartening. Never mind, water bodies are so close to Arlington residents that we serve. Um, so I do look forward to having conversations and doing whatever it is that we can do. I'll be limited, but whatever this board can do to adv advocate to against the CSOs, I'm happy to support. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Mahan, I'm going to make a few comments and then I'll turn it to, to you. We'll consider this the end of like the, 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 the first round. And um, I also want to thank Ms. Anderson. And, and I was familiar to a certain extent about the CSO issue. I've done some research um, over the past couple of weeks, knowing that this is coming before us. And it's, it, it is an incredibly complex issue. And, and this issue, which is related to the Boston Harbor cases that, that were filed in the 1980s, this, this, these cases were, were filed against the MDC at the time, and they precipitated the creation of the MWRA in 1984 and 1985. And the federal district court has actually been supervising this litigation since 1985. And 2021 is actually a critical time period for that. That was a goal to have the, the, the long-term control plan implemented and in place and, and perhaps put an end to the litigation. And, and it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case because as Ms. Anderson said, um, I'm just gonna cite the Somerville CSO um, which this year, that one alone, which is right across from uh, or nearby the, the, the hotel, uh, the, the home and suites on the Somerville side of that by the brook, there's been a discharge in calendar 2021 of 18 million gallons, 17.98 million gallons of combined sewage and wastewater into the Yellow Life Brook from that location. And unfortunately, the MWRA issues quarterly reports as to their progress. And, and the one they issued earlier this year, they said that Somerville 1A, which is that the, the, the sole CSO in Somerville, is the sole ale life brook outfall that MWRA is forecast that is likely not attaining the long-term control plan goals by December 2021. And that's why this report that's going to come out, I think, is so important because it's they're not going to meet their goals for this one. They feel like they may be meeting goals for the other five that are along the Life Brook, not completely eliminating them. But as I looked at this and as I talked to Ms. Anderson and, and did some more research, I you know, part of the problem here is 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 the cost. And, and I, I spoke with Representative Rogers over the weekend and, and he put it this way, it's not a lack of desire on the community's part, it's a, it's a lack of money to, to, to address these issues. And I think that clearly is the case with Cambridge um, with, with, they, with, with what they have before them. But I think, as a board, this is a unique opportunity to try to work with our state delegation to identify state opera funds because the governor actually was looking to set aside $400 million for sewer and water infrastructure improvements on the state's allocation of opera. I think that got whittled down to about 175 million. But I, I think that's clearly an area where we need to work with our delegation. And I'd include Senator, Senator Brownsberger in that. I know he attended your, your session last week, but it seems to me that there's an opportunity to try to improve things through those funds. It's, as you said, a once in a lifetime probably opportunity to do that. You've already advocated to Cambridge to try to use some of their funds to improve their CSOs. And the infrastructure bill, I think, I think again, we've got to reach out to our federal delegation and see what can be earmarked and, and how that comes through. Because I will tell you the, the representatives along the Merrimack River have worked very hard to address CSOs out there. And we've got to try to um, work collaboratively in my view to try to get additional funds to improve the situation. And it's unique because they're not in Arlington. We don't have standing to intervene, but it affects Arlington families. As you said, there's 1200 families in the Yellow Life Brook floodplain that can be affected by this. And um, certainly something that I think we, we should try to get involved with and, and advocate, but, but try to work collaboratively with our neighbors and with our delegation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and certainly I think we're, we're, we're all willing to do that and, and really look to what comes out of the MWRE reports at the end of this year, because that, that should guide next steps. But with that, I, I will turn to Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and of course, uh, knowing me, I want to overreach on this and probably have 10 to 12 different possible avenues we could explore. Now that's not feasible, um, not just in terms of cost, but in terms of staff and, and time and allocating that. Um, what I'd like to do after tonight is um, work with the chair and the town manager. Um, now that we have that placeholder um, for Alwife NIPTES, <clears throat> 
outline some, um, if I could put all the ideas down and if anyone else wants to add to it. And then um, we've already had our goals meeting, but perhaps when we vote, either vote um, our finalized goal document, maybe have a brief discussion that night to see what, um, if we're advised pick the top three, pick, pick the top four, it has to be um, the board that makes that decision and certainly not me. Um, what I'd like to do in the short term is investigate um, things that are really kind of low cost and things that were in agreement, whether through uh, tri-community or through MW MWRA process, which is, um, and I think some of them, when we had the tri-community working group, um, it, was, it was Belmont, Arlington, Cambridge, and we invited some of them, we went down to try because the then mayor would only send the recreational director and didn't really take us seriously. So yes, it was a political issue that back then, he just didn't want to deal with it, you know, um, which is fine, but I'm encouraged we have a new mayor in some of them now. Um, when we would have the tri-county community meetings, um, it really should be, you know, renamed because it should be the four communities. Cambridge took it very serious. Then it was a little bit of a political issue, but it was mostly a revenue issue and with Cambridge and with um, MWRA. But they said Owen O'Riordan, who I believe is still the DPW director, who is fantastic. And he always did everything he could recognizing that. Um, so they're definitely more receptive to it now. I mean, I felt Cambridge was open, but it was kind of still a political issue. Um, and I agree, agree now is, is the uh, time to strike on that. But the other thing is, is if um, town council, I know he's already started investigating this, um, can look into what they're already in violation of. You know, there's supposed to be a process that we get notified when there is a CSO discharge. Some of them, I think recently really messed up on one. And I think it was cited, you know, but it was after the fact. The other thing that um, MWRA and then MDC and now DCR was part of the previous agreement was there's supposed to be, and I know it sounds silly, it's supposed to be signage up so that when people walk by, um, they don't just see CSO 1A. We, and what happened was MWRA and then MDC and now DC, well, no, DCR, they just didn't want to do it. So the town of Arlington ended up doing it. But then when DCR, uh, and I'm blanking on the planner's name, Dan something, because I just, Driscoll. Not my favorite. <laughs> Life does have a block on that. You all know why. Um, when he went down there, he took all the signs down that Arlington had put up that DCR was supposed to have there, and he's refused to put them up. So that's like a short term thing because I think once people have knowledge, like Mr. Diggins said, you know, I'm, you know, I'm hearing this and I want to know more, but a lot of people don't even know what the issue is. So, um, so moving forward, I'd like the board to have a discussion around our strategy for the NIPTES um, permit process, because we do have a role in that. Um, and that involves planning, involves the board. Um, I'd like to, um, as, as we discussed at our goals meeting, explore EPA, um, look into, and we didn't say this, but if there's anything under the current Boston Harbor Clean Act, um, definitely want to revitalize in some form what we used to call the Tri-County. Um, committee with a different name, but I know now Senator Brown's, I mean, I started it with members of the East Orange Canada Committee, which I think you were in on that too, Kristen, um, with George well, Late and Elsie, Elsie Fury and Will Brownsberger, who was then a select board member. Um, so I guess I would ask the chair if he could just ask the staff um, to include in board materials, just a roster of who was on that tri-county community um, group. Um, and where everyone seems receptive to this, I will say with all due respect, some of them in Cambridge, if you look at their revenues, not even looking at the opera money, um, there's money there, as well as looking at state opera funding. So um, those I guess would be my first thoughts. And then um, just continuing to work with my colleagues, the manager and, and um, town council about maybe by whatever meeting we have the final draft report of our goals, if something can be crafted of 
things we actually can do legally. You know, there may be things that, nope, there's no relief in Clean Up Water Act. So don't put that on. So that would be my premise is start working through the chair and everybody else and uh, get our game plan for, I think we have like four different areas that we should focus in on, but I'm not the person to, to guide that because it's it's the select board. It's not Mahan selects. So, um, and my colleagues have um, the chair who's also an attorney. Um, he can, you know, run circles around me on that stuff. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And and I think we will you put this on, you know, have regular instances where we'll, we'll put this on our agenda for talking about, I may create a subcommittee um, and, and talk to, um, I may talk to Mrs. Mahan about that or talk to other members and, and uh, working on that um, going forward and come back before the board. But I, I think there are a number of areas that we can get information to the board. We can look at some of these, um, dates coming up where I, I think there's a public comment period in February for the report that's gonna be issued in December. So that would be a time period to, to, to work on comment, but in really work with that delegation too. But so Mr. Diggins' hand uh, go up, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And it's kind of based on um, your, your comments made um, and, and comments of um, Ms. Mahat and, and um, Ms. Anderson. Uh, so roughly how much would it cost to solve this problem? I, I, I think it's an, an originally the, the Alewife Brook area was looked at as there was, I think originally 12 CSOs, now it's down to six. There's four that are in Cambridge, one that's operated by MWRA and one by the city of Somerville. And I think the original estimate for the whole Alewife Brook area, and this is going back a couple of decades, was over $112 million. I don't know, and I think Ms. Anderson and I spoke about this recently, what the cost is for any particular one CSL, but I think it's related to the entire system. So it's hard to get a handle on that within the documents. And I think that's something that we need to try to take a look at, but that's that's one of the reasons why the, the, these variances have been granted too, because one of the criteria for a, a variance is that the cost to correct this issue, and, and, and this isn't my personal view, but the cost to correct it outweighs the benefit, okay? And, and that's, that seems cruel when you're downstream and, and subject to flooding, but I, it, that is one of the criteria in the regulations. Um, Attorney Hein, did you wanna add anything to that or? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, Chair. your hand go up and then, I, okay. I, 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 this has been a very full-throated conversation. The level of detail that I offer is probably not appropriate for this particular moment. So I'll, 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 I'll look forward to working with all the folks uh, from Save the Alewife and the board and and the manager, um, as well as uh, a lot of our terrific staff who know a lot about this uh, issue as well. Okay, yeah. And I, I don't, Ms. Anderson, you, you and I had that conversation the other day about trying to get a, a better handle on costs. And maybe this is in the short term, making incremental changes too, and getting using opera funds to make incremental changes. I, I, I you know, we don't know the answer to that yet. We we, we need to, to, to learn more about it. and encourage, I, I would say, the MWRA as much as anybody to, to get involved in this thing because they control a lot of the reporting. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ms. Anderson. Oh, no. I, I think, um, Mr. Diggins, you're absolutely right to be asking the question of how much it's going to cost. And that's one of the questions that we have that hasn't yet been answered. And we're hoping that the town can help um, us to find out what that is because we're pretty confident that Cambridge knows how much it will cost to um, separate their sewers and close their CSOs. And Somerville, I think, also knows. Uh, so it, it, it's maybe a matter of um, reaching out in a friendly way and asking them. I don't, or maybe we, the town council, could FOIA them, use the use Freedom of Information Act. I, but I think that takes a really long time and it would be good to know um, because if we knew how much it was going to cost, then we would know how much money we're asking for, Fed, you know, fit federal or state funds to pay for it. It seems it's a, it's a crucial question. Um, so thank you for asking that. Yeah, thanks. Attorney Hein, did, 
Yeah, I, I, this, this I do think I can provide a little bit more discrete sort of feedback on. So I think that one way to think about it is these are really sort of connected ecosystems of, of permits. Um, it's not just the um, NIPTES permit, it's the MS4 permit. It's a lot of um, interrelated things. And so part of it, I think what the community is experiencing and responding to, Ms. Mahan and Ms. Anderson have both raised, is that in the original projections for what the CSO control plan would achieve, um, didn't necessarily anticipate the impacts of climate change mm -hmm. and more extreme weather events. So um, part of the cost calculation that we'll have to be thoughtful about is not just the actual infrastructure for the CSOs themselves where uh, sewer and stormwater intersect into a, basically a single pipe and then has an outfall, but also what are the things that uh, Cambridge, Somerville, uh, even Arlington can continue to do. I know we've already done a lot of great work on this to um, absorb stormwater, which I think both uh, Ms. Mahan and Ms. Anderson alluded to. So th there's um, a sort of holistic vision of how to reduce stormwater, which aids the reduction in CSO discharge. And then there's the actual um, uh, infrastructure of the sewer uh, outflows themselves where they uh, combine with stormwater. So it's, it's just so folks know that there's sort of these uh, intersecting um, uh, costs and strategies that can come together. And I think what I'm hearing from Mrs. Mahan and other members of the board is that uh, you'd like to have as comprehensive a set of uh, considerations and strategy that both involve holding uh, CSO permit holders accountable, but also trying to support the necessary political action to allocate resources to, to help them. So I, I, I'll be happy to work with manager and select board um, to outline uh, what the sort of boundary lines are between some of those things. Thank you. Attorney Hunter. Yeah, and, and one other thing I'll just add, I mean, this again is still being supervised by, by Judge Stearns, a federal district court judge. And it's part of a, a much larger piece of litigation that, that dealt with Boston Harbor pollution and the rebuilding of the Deer Island treatment plant and then the movement of, of, of um, wastewater from the South Shore to Deer Island. And this is a, while it's an important piece, it's a, it's a smaller piece, but it also makes it more difficult to find what specifically um, is going on with, with the, the Alewife Brook area um, because you will see updates that are sent into the court and there'll be updates about Alewife, but it will be updates about what's going on in the Charles River, what's going on in various areas. So it's very complex, but I mean, I think we can start digging through that a little bit to get, to get more information. But again, in the short term, I do see an opportunity here to try to advocate for funds directed to it. It's, it's a little unusual because it's, we really wanna advocate for funds to be spent in a different jurisdiction, but it's to our benefit that it happens. Right. Okay, uh, Mrs. Mahan. Just, I just need to, uh, the, yeah, the mute button. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Um, I would ask uh, through the chair, the town manager. I know we have um, two of our conservation commission members um, at our meeting here tonight. Thank you, Ms. Schwartz. You didn't have to stay, but I'm thrilled that you did. I would like to um, either the chair or the town manager reach out to Conservation Commission and see um, previously with the, this process, 15, 20 years, Conservation Commission had a very active role, um, uh, but I'm not going to pretend to tell them what it is, what role they should be playing because things have changed. I know there's a water body subcommittee there. Um, so whatever's the appropriate way um, through the chair or town manager to ask the chair of the conservation commission first, if appropriate, and if so, when appropriate, um, let them know, um, maybe the two chairs, Mr. DeCourcy and conservation commission chair can speak and say, you know, the select board is coming up with an action plan around this event, around these different per, um, permits and processes. Um, please tell us what role you all should play and could play so that we all work in concert together. Um, and, you know, I'm not going into an area that's already being covered with people with far more expertise on the Conservation Commission, and I could really mess it up. 
So um, however we can get that done, you know, the answer is, which I don't think it will be, there's nothing, Conservation Commission has no role. I would accept that, but um, I know there isn't. So I just want that coordinated. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will not raise my hand again. Thank you, Mr. Mon. And and I, I will talk to Mr. Chapelin this week about that as a, as a follow-up and we will, um, um, we will continue to, to discuss this as a board. And like I said, I might create a subcommittee type structure too. Uh, Mr. Helmer. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, I just wanted to second my colleague, Mr. Hurd's motion of receipt of the report and add my gratitude for a good discussion. Great, thank you. Okay, any further discussion from the board? Okay, so on a motion for receipt by Mr. Hurd that was seconded by Mr. Helmuth. Um, Attorney Hyde. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helen? Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, and thank you, everyone. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. yes. And thank you, Ms. Anderson, for your work um, and, and for the presentation tonight. We will continue to talk with you. Thanks so much for your time, everybody. Sure. Okay. Um, so moving on to correspondence received, we have three items. Item 15 parking concerns in the vicinity of Arlington High School. Uh, item 16, reading of land acknowledgement at select board meetings. And item 17, notice town manager vacation buyback. Uh, Mr. Hurd? I'll move receipt. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Diggins? I'll second that. Thank you. Mr. Helmet. Uh, support that, and I wonder, do we, would we want to re refer the uh, parking letter to the town manager for appropriate action? Yes, so meant. Great, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? No questions, thank you. I don't have any questions either. So um, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmer? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourse? Yes. Attorney Hyman, let's go. Okay, uh, new business. Uh, Attorney Hyman? No new business, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a few quick pieces of new business. Uh, one, I wanted to thank uh, Mike Rademacher and the whole team at DPW for uh, very quickly after getting the approvals from MassDOT for putting out some of the temporary measures and signage on Chestnut Street. Uh, I know we heard from a resident under open forum about the continued urgency, but um, DVW worked hard to get signs up as well as putting out the temporary, temporary bollards. And I wanted to thank them for that. Uh, I also wanted to follow up with the board to let you all know that um, I know, I believe at the board's last full meeting concern about the placement of the blue bike station in Arlington Center uh, behind Uncle Sam Plaza was expressed. We have found a new location. We're gonna put it back in the parking lot, which will ultimately still be a temporary location, but we will be able to barricade it such that it can stay there throughout the winter so that there can be use throughout the winter months of the system. Um, I will notify um, the abutter as well as the abutter's attorney of that. We won't be able to move it until the first or second week of January based on when blue bikes uh, can actually get out to move it, but we do have a plan now to remove it from its current location. And then finally, um, I'm sure uh, by now we've all read the news, but I did wanna mention that Mayor Wu announced this morning in Boston that the city of Boston would be requiring uh, proof of vaccination status for entrance into restaurants, gyms or fitness centers or entertainment venues. There's a number of other communities in the greater Boston region that are considering the same. Um, we have started discussions with our health and human services staff, as well as a brief discussion under new business at last week's Board of Health uh, meeting. Um, no decisions have been made. Ultimately, I think over the course of the next few weeks, we will have a series of discussions trying to figure out what is best for Arlington residents and Arlington businesses. Um, speaking here tonight, I would say how we end up recommending from a staff point of view might very much rely on what Cambridge does. Um, if Cambridge imposes such a requirement, um, it may in fact create um, a barrier for our businesses if they're not requiring the same given people's choices. Uh, but there's a lot to work through. I, I, the thing I wanna make clear is it's being considered but no decisions have been made and ultimately 
recommendations will be formulated based on what um, what we think is in the best interest of Arlington residents and businesses. And that's all I had for new business tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. I just have one brief, brief item, and this is really a heads up on some new business that I think may be before the board um, in the future. Um, I've uh, heard from a number of residents um, about some increased concerns um, in some recent close calls in the uh, Wachusett and Appleton Street uh, intersection uh, of, of late. And I mean, this happened because a town meeting member I, have, I happen to know really well wrote to me and I was responsive and, and uh, he encouraged a few other people to write to me and they've been in touch with the select board office. We were not able to get this on tonight's agenda in time, uh, but uh, fortunately I'm grateful to the chair and Mr. DeCourcy for uh, uh, expressing interest in that and I believe is planning to put that on our agenda at a future meeting, perhaps as early as next month. Um, so, um, so I appreciate those who wrote, wrote to me into the select board office and, and, and uh, know that we will take a close look at that when we enter next opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mr. Diggins. No new business. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Hurd. Uh, no new business, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my new business is the town manager's new business um, uh, regarding the Board of Health. Um, I know they, I now know that they've had a meeting and sounds like they may have a meeting or two in the future. And I know there are times they activate their list of businesses, um, email or whatever. Um, so if um, it's already been done and or it's going to be done again, that there will be a meeting to, to um, not only get feedback or test the temperature um, from these businesses, because it's, it's getting so I can't really go in many establishments in Arlington to a, get a sense, but also provide some information. Because I think a lot of it is just people don't have all the information. So when you don't, sometimes it's a reaction to expect the worst. So, um, and that may already be in the works. So I'm, I'm just reiterating the obvious, but uh, I'm getting a lot of, how come I didn't know? But then I've gotten, well, I did get an email and I'm like, you should read it. <laughs> so I'm assuming. Um, and then, also, I had Chestnut Street down there. Um, I don't know if um, the chair or the town manager can possibly reach out to Ms. Verone um, and let her know that the you know, board discussed this at our goals meeting. We also put that in um, under transportation as part of our joint goal with the town manager that these improvements, signage and temporary bollards have been made and this future ones um, to be determined whether it's uh, a legal issue that we have to clear or it's a seasonal issue that we have to wait for. So I'll leave it to the chair and the, and the town manager on how to um, make sure she, she gets that information only because God bless her, uh, you know, she's not at the meeting when we got to this point and not that she should be. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And I have a couple pieces of uh, new business. First, uh, last Friday, Mrs. Mahan and I attended the Long Range Planning Committee meeting, presided of the Long Range Planning Committee meeting. Um, and we um, are still in what I would call a discussion phase. We've got to get to an action phase pretty soon. And um, there is another meeting scheduled for January 7th. And, and one of the issues that came up, we thought we might have preliminary revenue estimates from the state in advance of last Friday's meeting. We did not have that. So there will be some preliminary revenue numbers that will um, help guide us on, on January 7th. But we are facing deficit, significant def projected deficits in fiscal years 25 and 26. Right now, we show a deficit, a projected deficit of about $1.3 million in fiscal 24. That needs to be eliminated. And I think there's agreement that that needs to be eliminated so that the first year that we see a deficit is 25. But we're getting to the point where, as I said, we need action. and, and um, we're hoping that that happens through dialogue uh, between the members, the two members, Mrs. Mahan and I on the select board. We've got school committee members, we've got finance committee members, and um, we're, we're the town manager and, and his staff as well. That um, we'll see some we'll we'll see some movement because it, it's just every month that passes, 
without reaching consensus is makes it that much more difficult to take action as you get closer to a deficit period. So we'll keep the board posted on that um, after the next meeting, as I said, which is on January 7th. Um, I thank Mr. Helmuth for the update on what Shusett Avenue and, and Appleton. And I will be putting on in addition to that in January, we had talked about having a, a TAC update, if you will, in terms of what's happening with items that we refer to TAC. That I'm hoping to do that for January 10th. It's either going to be the 10th or the second meeting in January, but I think it's appropriate because we we get asked from time to time, as I said, what what happened to that item that you referred, and, and TAC is doing great work. But I think it's it's good for them. It's good for us to 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 know the status. Um, last thing I want to say, it's getting near the end of the year. Um, I've had a lot of discussions with my family, friends, supporters, and um, I have made a decision that I, I will be a candidate. Uh, for re-election to the select board this April, um, and I and I hope to have the opportunity to continue to serving the town and uh, and with you, fellow members of the board. Um, so with that, that uh, concludes my new business, and um, thought it was a really great meeting tonight. Just reinforces my decision um, um, to do that. So thank you, everybody, and um, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yes, okay. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Chair, thank you for the bestest last new business news I've heard in a long time. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Decorsi. Yes, for me. See you, Ms. Phelps. Okay. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, folks. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you.